Well, hello out there on YouTube land, Jay Kladek again with another kit review. Today, what you see in front of you is the brand new, hot off the presses, Dragon 172 scale Gemini spacecraft with Spacewalker. This uh, is the latest entry in the long line of uh, kits that Dragon has been introducing over the past year, uh, representing milestones in the U.S. space program. And, well, this is the first, to my knowledge, styrene kit in 172 scale of a Gemini spacecraft. Let me give you a little bit of a history lesson. Project Gemini was the second manned space program. Came after Project Mercury. Uh, from flights were, took place from 1965 to 1966. Um, total of ten flights were manned, uh, starting with Gemini three, which had Gus Grissom and John Young, concluding with uh, Gemini twelve, which had Jim Lovell and Buzz Aldrin. Over those ten flights, they tested pretty much all the techniques we needed to get to the moon with the exception of actually flying to the moon. So, tested EVA, spacewalk, tested rendezvous and docking techniques, change in orbit, uh, working in space, long duration space flight, Frank Borman and uh, Jim Lovell actually spent 14 days in one of these things uh, before coming home. Uh, all in all, a very, very successful program. But, enough of that history there. Um, let's show you what the contents of the kit are like. Uh, parts count is relatively low, probably about, oh, I don't know, 20, uh, maybe about 20 parts, I would say. <clears throat> Most of them are molded in this uh, gray styrene plastic. And like the mercury redstone, the circular cylindrical sections are molded as uh, one piece thanks to Dragon slide mold technology, so therefore you don't really have to worry about gluing sections together and trying to match up seams. All you have to do is just use a file and a knife to remove any uh, mold seams on either sides, sides of the parts. Um, generally I like what I see. Uh, one thing that I will point out, which is pretty nice, is um, Ravel is the only other company, one of the only other companies, to my knowledge, that has done Gemini spacecraft. They they do one in 148 scale with a Mercury capsule. Then they also do one in 124 scale. The 124 scale one and the 148 scale one are coming out uh, from Ravel USA and Ravel of Germany. In fact, the uh, the big capsule. 124 scale is, Revella, is available from Ravella, Germany right now, so you can pick that up uh, if you live in Europe. Um, we have to wait a few months before we get in this country. Um, one thing I do notice about how Dragon has molded this kit are these uh, two little cutouts that go in front of the two side hatches uh, where, the, where the commander and the pilot sit. Um, Ravel's kit are based on unflown mock-ups and they have kind of like a little crescent shape here on the front for these cutouts. Uh, Dragon is the first company I've seen that has actually molded these properly for a flight article. Uh, these cutouts going all the way up to where the uh, snout ring is as it were. And that's one thing I really like. Other things that are pretty cool well, as I said, this one comes with the spacewalker, so therefore it actually comes with uh, a rudimentary set of interior pieces. Um, the flight couches, instrument panel, center joystick, open side hatch. It's also got the uh, the two closed side hatches here. Um, in addition to the uh, unbuilt model kits, Dragon's also been offering this as a as a couple of pre-builts, doing it 
with closed side hatches and with an open one with the spacewalking astronaut. So, you can build this one either way. The couches, as you can see, well, they're obviously based on the Ravel design, so those ejection seats are not exactly accurate. I would say in 172 it's not really going to be a problem. In 124 scale, uh, that bit does kind of need to be modified. <clears throat> in addition to the gray parts trees, you also get this uh, brown one. It's actually made out of a uh, soft vinyl. You get two three-piece astronauts. You get one who's actually one's four-piece and one is three-piece. You get the guy with his open legs. That's uh, the spacewalker, similar to Ed White. He's got two arms, the, the little uh, compressed uh, nitrogen gas gun in his hand, although the, the little veins on the outside, those will have to be scratch-built. Uh, he's got a chest pack. His buddy here, which is the commander, that would, if this is Ed White, this would be uh, Jim McDivitt. He's got an opening in, the, in his chest for a chest pack, but he doesn't have a chest pack. Um, and so that'll have to be filled. Although, when you put it inside the cabin, I doubt you're really going to see it. You're probably just going to see his arm on that one side. Given that these are soft vinyl, traditional glues will not work on this. Um, that means you're probably going to have to resort to super glue or epoxy. I wish they'd done these in uh, hard styrene myself, but they must have had their reasons. Uh, Paint-wise, you'll have to primer it pretty good or use acrylic paints to paint it. Paint these, because um, if you use enamel paints directly on vinyl, it's going to stay tacky. Even years and years later, it's still going to stay tacky. So, primer these really good or use acrylic paints. Decal sheet. Um, very nicely done. This uh, sheet is printed for Dragon by Cartograph in Italy, and they're one of the best companies. They do both aftermarket decal sheets, and then they also do factory decal sheets for several companies, including Ravella Germany, Minicraft, etc. Got some nice red striping here for uh, the hatches. Um, areas around the snout, American flags. Uh, United States logos. Generally, I like what I see. Oh. Yeah, I mean, this this is actually more extensive than uh, what Ravel USA has done with their decal sheets. Um, I have heard that the uh, Ravel Germany Gemini actually does come with some additional red striping, so I gotta wonder if this sheet might be related to that, considering Cartograph has been doing work on both sheets. Well, we'll see. Here we have a close-up of uh, one of the gray parts trees. This one's got all the interior bits on it. Uh, open side hatch. Um, central joystick in the cockpit. This is the, uh, the floor. This is the instrument panel turned upside down. Let me flip it over. There we go. Detail, not too bad. Although it's kind of hard to make out what some of these instruments are. You'll either have to consult your reference photos or get really creative in the paint job. Um, center console right here. This piece, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I'll have to check the instructions. Not bad, in my opinion. Uh, close up of the big parts tree. Two hatches in the closed position. Thruster ports. Back part of the service module. Front part of the service module. One thing I like heat shield. This is nice. Um, reason why I point that out is the uh, pre-built Geminis that have been done have all been flight versions and you can't take the uh, these pieces off the heat shield. However, this long piece right here is uh, a radio direction find a, a radio beacon antenna for after the uh, spacecraft splashes down in the ocean. 
and awaits recovery. So that means you could actually build this with uh, the recovery antenna up. Goes right there, I believe. Uh, back into the service module. The funny thing is, is the box says special bonus for first production gold covered <laughs> let me show you yeah gold covered uh, rear section well the kit did not come with that that's okay um, bare metal foil can do the job or alclad or even just normal gold paint so it's nice that they thought about putting it on but I'm not really worried the fact that they don't have it, so. Um, Accuracy-wise, I generally like what I see. Um, now we get into some of the nitty-gritty about what's accurate on this kit and what isn't. Uh, this model, to my knowledge, is designed to represent uh, Gemini 4, which was uh, the first one to uh, conduct the uh, spacewalk with Ed White and uh, Jim, Jim McDivitt. Um, and it represents that pretty well. Uh, one thing I notice, you got two nose cap pieces, one here, one here. This one with uh, no detail on it represents a cover that goes on the front of the Gemini on launch. And it covers up this piece right here, which uh, contains uh, rendezvous radar. Um, some of the spacecraft had transponders, others had rendezvous radar. I think Gemini 4... Um, let's see, this particular piece has been seen on Gemini 6. I don't know if it was necessarily uh, used on Gemini 4. Um, I gotta check my references on that. It would be relatively easy to modify. Gemini 7, which had Frank Borman and Jim Lovell, it didn't have a rendezvous radar, it just had a big transponder bolted to the nose. Um, relatively easy to modify, if you got the proper reference photos. Now, one minor inaccuracy, which I will point out, these two pieces here go on either side of the... Uh, of the spacecraft, one of them is once they they've each got like a retrograde thruster and a translation thruster on either side. Um, Dragon molded them mirror image. Well, it turns out that the thruster ports are actually the same left and right now. These detail pieces right here are correct, but uh, these pieces here are supposed to be the same, not mirror image. Um, what I'll probably have to do is, whatever one is the offender, I'll probably have to cut it off of this piece and cut it right down the middle and then swap the two halves left and right to fix that. It's a relatively minor thing, or you can just leave it as is. There's not too many people that realize that it is supposed to be the same right and left side. Um, other minor inaccuracy I'll point out, this piece right here is a uh, cover for a horizon sensor scanning head. Um, that piece comes off after the uh, capsule reaches orbit. The scanning heads which go on the side of the nose right about there, they kind of look like, well, like maybe oil filters glued to the side of an engine block. Um, it's really hard to describe unless you've actually seen pictures of them. They can be made with little tiny pieces of uh, styrene if you got the uh, proper reference photos. Um, one thing, there is rib detail on the service module. Turns out these recessed areas are supposed to represent tape strips. Um, NASA put those on the early Gemini's pieces of black tape over the uh, white sections for thermal control to make sure that these white areas did not cool down too much when the uh, spacecraft was going through a night pass. Um, 
for later Geminis, they took those pieces of tape off. Well, since Dragon represented them as uh, scribe detail, only way to fix that is to get some uh, thin down putty and fill those and sand them even. But thankfully, uh, since there's not really many features on there until you start gluing parts on, that shouldn't be pretty. That shouldn't be hard to do if you want to uh, fix that. Um, Overall, I like what I see. I'm dropping parts here. <laughs> and I can definitely work with it. Oh, one thing I'll make mention of. There are no clear windows molded into these parts. Uh, so if you want clear windows on your Gemini, you're going to have to punch these holes out and use uh, needle files to open those openings up and then use some uh, micro crystal clear to uh, represent glass. Let me give you uh, one more close-up of the vinyl molded astronauts again. This is the spacewalker. This is the guy that goes in the commander's seat. Two arms, two more arms. Spacewalker arm has the uh, jet, the, uh, the little handgun. And this is the chest pack. Um, as I said, there's a hole in the chest for both of these guys, but the chest pack only corresponds to one guy, so... Uh, unless you open the, uh, but unless you open the, uh, commander's hatch, you're not really going to notice that there's nothing really in the chest region. Um, but if you do, you'll have to put a little, uh, filler putty there. Not hard to do. Okay, in this bag right here, we have the, uh display stand. Uh, same type of display stand that they're using on the pre-builds. Um, plus there's also a wire in here. This is actually the uh, umbilical wire that goes to the uh, to the spacewalker. It's made out of... it's it's a semi-posable stiff wire, which is really nice. You can dangle it, do what you want. Really a nice touch. Um, and since it is flexible, and since the astronaut is flexible, if a finger twangs it, it's it shouldn't break it, provided you uh, drill the holes deep enough that it goes in without any problems. Well, let's take a close look at the box art. Really nice painting on the cover. Um, as you can see, the uh, Horizon Pitch Scanner, uh, the Horizon Sensor, it's got that cover on there just like what the kit has. That's not accurate. Front end, Accurate for some of the Geminis, but not all. Now, <clears throat> true to form, just like the other Dragon products, this has some stuff printed on the back, uh, but they limit the uh, stuff that's printed on the back just to the uh, the painting instructions. Front end, capsule, all that, four views. The thing I that I do like compared to the redstone is that the instructions themselves are done in paper. I'm glad. I, I frankly, Dragon, I wish you would uh, do that on all your upcoming space kits because it's really kind of annoying to dump the parts in the top lid and use the bottom lid to... Uh, look at assembly steps. So, it's got a traditional set of instructions. Um, looks pretty good. As with anything else, I'd highly recommend consulting other references if you can, just to make sure that uh, the part steps correspond. Uh, paint color callouts that they're showing they give you the names in English, German, Spanish, and uh, French, I believe, is the fourth language. Um, the uh, the numbers that they use correspond to Gunzi, Gunzi Sangio colors. Oh, they've even got uh, Model Master numbers. So if you've got access to the uh, Tester's Model Master shades, you can actually find out what colors you need. So that's a nice touch, but consult references. Out of the box, I do like what I see. 
Um, Dragon's done a reasonably decent job with what they've got. Um, it's nice to finally see a Gemini in Styrene. Uh, Real Space Models based out of Tallahassee, Florida does actually make a resin Gemini capsule. Um, they also make upgrade parts for both the 148 and the 124 scale Revell kits. Uh, based on the way Dragon has molded this guy, I have a sneaking suspicion eventually they're probably going to do a uh, Gemini Titan, considering they've got parts there to build the uh, the thing on a Titan booster or build it in, on, build it in an on-orbit configuration for the most part. But if you don't want to wait for that, uh, Glenn Johnson at Real Space has got a really nice... Uh, Gemini Titan resin kit in 172 scale that you can purchase for $50 plus shipping. I'm thinking about ordering that, um, although I may try to scratch build a uh, Titan on my own. Oh, price I paid for this guy. It um, retails for about $23.99, I believe. Uh, price I paid was uh, $20.99 locally. Uh, you could probably even find these online for about just under $20. Uh, really good model. I'm going to be buying more because there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. Um, after I get done with the Red Sun, this may be my next project. So, with that, I will say go buy one. I think it's a good deal. Uh, check your references. Dragon, you're doing a pretty good job. Need to improve your references still, but you're getting better. In the meantime, thank you for watching.